I got nothing. Give it sure to me wanna, hard. Are you sure you want to do this? Give it you to sure? me hard. Come on. Give it to me seven times. <laughs> oh, you know. I just really thought I was going to get a text saying the show was off. Yeah, look, I, I'd love to do that, mate. And, um, and you know, the things I would like to say, I'd, I'd actually like to be there because I'd certainly give a gobble to just about the whole lot of the... It was pathetic. It was shameful. It was embarrassing. All of those things. Um, and yeah. but also probably as as much of a shock as anything else, Tom. I mean, this is going. This headline is going to dominate the world of sport today, is it not? Because the result, no one saw coming. Come on. Uh, yes, I would say nobody saw this result coming. Least of all you. Otherwise, mm-hmm. I'm sure you would have taken this weekend off work. Yes. Um, I mean, it was. It genuinely was. You know. There, there, there are things in, like, TV dramas or movies when you find out, you know, Bruce Willis is the ghost, you know, spoiler alert. Or, you know, you, you, the, the first episode of season two of House of Cards, the US one, I won't spoil that for people, but it's worth watching until the end of season two. There are moments that happen and you go, oh, uh, I don't know how to process it. And I actually think that was happening from, like, the fifth goal. And, you know, if you watch the first half... It was a very even game of football. Nothing was really happening. There was a goal. It was a decent goal. You thought, yeah, you know, Liverpool probably deserved to be winning. They deserved to be winning 1-0 at this point. But um, I'll come back for the second half. And I went out and I made some lunch and came back into the front room thinking, got a good second half here. And then suddenly it was like one of those, you know, you drop your drink on the floor moments. You realise that Kevin Spacey all along um, was was the guy in the usual suspects the, the, all the way through. And he's been reading the notice board behind him. You know, it was it was a baffling performance. It was baffling because in recent times, Man United have been so reliable, defensively reliable. Casemiro defending the back line incredibly well in midfield, creating chances, scoring goals, and also kind of exceeding our expectations over and over and over again. You know, I was at the Carabao Cup final last week, as you know, last I spoke to you, and it was such a professional performance. Um, They came from behind to beat West Ham in midweek and West Ham played quite well on the night. So it was really impressive for them to bring the players off the bench and turn things around. They've beaten Barcelona in recent times. You know, the last week they've had challenge after challenge after challenge and they've all been met with, with brilliance. And then today, every single individual had a terrible, terrible game. Collectively, no one delivered on any element of the game plan. And actually... It's quite funny. I've just been watching the, uh, the Sue Ness Neville debate on Sky Sports here in the UK. And the funny thing is, no one's going on about how incredible the Liverpool goals were. The seller volley for four, definitely. But five of the goals are like the goals that you see over children's football. Like, I, I take my nephew football and he's like 10. And, you know, one player can't quite kick it hard enough. And he hits the backside of another player and the goalkeeper's fallen over. And then one player forgets what way he's kicking and it goes in and it's 5-0. And the parents start going, maybe we should take him off here. Things are getting a bit embarrassing. It was sort of like that. Yeah. Like, I think it was the the Salah goal when he took his shirt off. It was just so, so, so bad. And, you know, it'll take days and days and days of analysis to try and work out just how it went so wrong. Well, is it one of those results? I mean, you know, if you're a Man United fan, I mean, what can you do? You just got to shelve it. You got to park it and you got to say, look, there's a whole season ahead. There's the top four to fight for. There's other trophies and things. But in terms of Liverpool, I mean, this potentially can galvanise this season. I don't know if they can go and and stuff Real Madrid. They're going to have to score or beat them by four goals, of course, over there or get three and maybe go to a penalty shootout or something. But certainly it rearranges the top four. And if you're Tottenham, Man United and Newcastle thinking that, okay, well, you know, we don't really have any competition for these final two spots. Oh, yes, here it comes. Well, if you're Man United for this week or so there's a great expression we have over here the the east london gangsters use it in the movies it's called wipe your mouth and move on and that's all there is to do for manchester united they've already won a trophy they'll probably win another one i would bet against it for the fa cup as well and you've got to do whatever you can to just block this from your memory because in the end this is going to be remembered as a really good season for liverpool it probably won't be um what they showed was they have a potency in attack what they showed is that Reports of their demise are greatly exaggerated. What we have seen as well is that they are better than what they've put on for the majority of this season. Is it hangover from last season that's lasted all year long? Is it the loss of Sadio Mane, the injury and decline of Van Dijk? Who knows what the reasons are for this season? But they showed us how under their ability they have played all season long. And I think that's something that Liverpool will be thinking about. 
I don't think the Real Madrid thing is going to happen, frankly. I, I don't see Real Madrid capitulating in that game, nor Real Madrid not scoring at the Bernabeu. So I don't think that will happen, though it should be another terrific slobber knocker between the two teams. I think the Champions League qualification thing is, is the most likely outcome. I think it probably will happen because their direct opponents are Tottenham Hotspur and they always find a way to blow it. Um, despite having Harry Kane and all that sort of stuff, they'll find a way to fall apart. Newcastle have overperformed with the calibre of squad they've got and Liverpool have underperformed. And when you get down the home stretch, Liverpool are usually chasing a lot more than they usually are. So I would bet heavily on Liverpool being in the top four come the end of the season, no higher than that. I would bet heavily on Man United winning another trophy. And I'd bet on this one being remembered as a bizarre, brilliant, entertaining, engaging anomaly. I'd be very surprised if it happened again anytime soon. All right, Tom Rennie talks board. I mean, we can do this for the next hour and a half if we really want to. Or we can move on to what's really important. And that's David Moyes in charge of your West Ham. Because don't you think you're getting away with this? You shipped four at Brighton and that was pathetic. Um, it was, do you know what? The funny thing is, it was the most pathetic performance of the weekend until Sunday. So in many ways, <laughs> you've given me some terrific cover here, mate. Um, no, look, look, I think that the trouble is, is that all the teams down there have got so many flaws. There are nine teams in a relegation battle for a reason. Southampton won the weekend, but they're not a particularly good team. But they played a Leicester team who, the moment there's any adversity in a the game, they totally crumble. As we saw again in, in the game against Southampton, you've got a West Ham team who I think can beat the worst teams in the league at home. They showed it against Everton and Forest, but they cannot currently go away to someone good and win. They've been totally incapable of doing that all season. And Brighton have played them off the park in both games they've played this season, home and away. And also, it didn't help that West Ham had their worst games against Brighton. They haven't beaten them in 12. They simply can't beat Brighton. It's been 13 years since they were able to beat Brighton. Um, and there's just some sort of weird block on West Ham taking them on. And they put in their two worst performances of the season, home and away against Brighton. But also you look at Nottingham Forest. They suddenly found a way to score goals against Everton on Sunday, but then they themselves have started conceding goals. So they're in the mix. Crystal Palace have drawn five of the last seven and lost the other two. No one's got less points than them since we came back from the World Cup. You know, on and on and on and on. All these teams have got massive deficiencies. No one is so bad they're relegated already by this point. Um, and I think West Ham are in that group. They are not, this year, a good enough team to win back-to-back -back games. Because if you can do that, you'll end up staying in the Premier League, maybe mid-table. The thing for West Ham is they can't win away, but at home they might get points. And at home, they've got three home games in a row, which is Aston Villa, the international break, then Southampton, then Newcastle. Now, do I think they will win those three? Of course not because they've been so utterly useless this season. But I certainly think they could, as opposed to away games where they can't win them. So there is still a chance for West Ham. It's still very much in their hands to stay up. But this weekend was a real nadir. And on David Moyes, he isn't going to get sacked. Definitively, definitely, no chance. Sullivan doesn't do it. The club's majority shareholder. It's too late in the day to do it. There's no one that would take the job. And I just don't think it's realistic at this point it's going to happen. It should have happened. It's not going to happen. They've, they've bet the house on David Moyes delivering. So far, they're probably going to lose the house. Tom, can we say, I'm just so stunned. I just don't even know what to say, mate. Look, can we say that it, it is a two-horse race for the title now? And forget that third pony, that third donkey, that third slag. Who hasn't even got off the start line? Yes. Yes, I think we can. Okay. I, I just think for your blood pressure, we can forget them. <laughs> um, I, I mean, look, they just... Arsenal, the victory was ludicrous, right? It was the kind of thing that if they win the league this year, and I'll still say if, because um, I'd still pick Manchester City, that's where my money remains. Um, but if they do, that victory this weekend is the one you're always going to remember because it was just incredible the way they came in behind to win it, the way they won it, the fact it was two minutes after the whistle was meant to have gone, the, the fact they conceded the fifth fastest goal in Premier League history uh, to Philip Billings' opener. It was a game of incredible entertainment and drama, and they found a way to win. They're finding ways to win in all sorts of ways right now, and they're a champion, unlike you know the Mourinho teams of old, that you want to watch them. It's the hottest ticket in town. If I can get a ticket to an Arsenal game, I will go to an Arsenal game. 
which isn't necessarily always true of watching Manchester City pass teams to dare score a couple of goals and shut up shop, which, you know, again, they did this weekend against Newcastle. So um, I think it is a two horse race. I'd still say Man City because they are a sovereign wealth fund and Arsenal are not. But if they can suddenly dig up Rhys Nelson out of nowhere to, to score a winner for them and they can keep on doing that until the end of the season, um, you know, I don't discount it, but it's not where my money is. But Man United are now where they are. It's only you and Aston Villa that are going to show no movement from this point. One super mid-table team and one team that will probably win another cup, already won one cup and will finish third. And you'll f- still find a way to whinge about it. God, you just don't know pain, do you? No, well, obviously not. I mean, that's the thing. I mean, and when you clearly point that out, we're not in a relegation scrap. We're still in third spot. We've got a bit of a buffer. If we can put this behind us, we can actually move on, perhaps get a top four spot, which means you can reinvigorate your squad because people want to play Champions League. Down the bottom, though, I mean, look, mate, 21 points for Bournemouth and us sitting bottom. Um, Right up to 13th, 12th spot, mate, at Crystal Palace, 27 points. So you've got, what, nine teams in there now, and there's two wins between each. I mean, this is where the real dogfight is going on. Let Arsenal and Man City faff away at the top. It's down the bottom is where the real football is, Tom. I think this is probably the biggest relegation scrap of the last 30 years. It's the first season I can recall in the decade I've covered the Premier League where at least one team uh, hasn't been cut adrift. There's no Norwich, there's no Watford, there's no Wigan. No Derby. You know, yeah. no one is going to be gone. Derby County, Sunderland. You know, there's always someone that's got 10, 12, 15 points now and they aren't going to make it happen. Um, that's not happening this year. You can go from bottom to 13th in two wins. Incredible. Absolutely Incredible. Um, and that says a lot about the fight of the worst teams in the league, being Southampton and Bournemouth, who I think many of us thought would be gone by now, but are not. But it also says a lot about the deficiencies of these teams with a bigger budget, who have spent poorly, been coached badly, and have been drifting. That's Everton, that's West Ham United, that's Leeds United. They have just drifted. They don't know how to play. They don't know how to win. They are directionless, they are aimless, and they are underwhelming. And these managers have had a long time now, these players have had a long time now to kick into gear, and they are not doing it. Throw Palace in that mix as well. There's a lot more underwhelming teams than ever, and there's overperforming strugglers, including Nottingham Forest in that group as well. So I have no idea how it's going to go. I'd still suggest it's going to be Bournemouth, Southampton, Leeds United, but... I could easily see Everton going, easily see West Ham going, easily see Crystal Palace going, because they just can't win. They just can't win and win consistently. And if you can win three games in a row, you're out of it. So it's going to be incredible. And I wouldn't be amazed if we went into the last weekend of the season with up to seven teams who could still go down, which would be extraordinary. Uh, You add that to a potential title race. You add that to a brilliant battle for Europa League football, which Brentford are in and Fulham are in and Brighton are in as long as the usual suspects, it could actually potentially be the most exciting end to a Premier League season ever, apart from for supporters of Man United, Chelsea and Villa, whose seasons are over. All right, Tom, today, just what is your, just give us your reaction to, and what would you say to every Man United ponce that you've ever known after today? Uh, I would say, turn it in, you losers. It could be worse. You could be literally anyone else. You don't know pain. You've never suffered if you started supporting the team after 1990. This is literally nothing. When I see ex-players from Man United on TV telling me what a disgrace it is and telling me this, that and the other, a week ago, they were saying the exact opposite about winning the Carabao Cup. Four days ago, they were slagging off Tottenham after a, a game between West Ham and Man United, which Man United won because they could bring on Marcus Rashford and Casemiro, and West Ham simply don't have the resources. You don't know pain. Take it as a character-building moment. I'm sure you'll win more trophies, and the rest of us, this is par for the course. This is what happens to us. You're not better than us just because Alex Ferguson was the best manager in the world at the absolute most important moment in the history of English football, being the birth of the Premier League. Get over it immediately. Get over yourselves immediately. Congratulate all your Liverpool supporting friends and enjoy the trophies that you won. And never go to anyone that doesn't support a Super 16 and say, you know what suffering is. You don't.